Welcome to the show. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to our first ever live super mega trivia slam. Who the hell am I? I'm Steve Strangio. Damn it, I'm your host. I'm your host and MC, your, your trivia concierge here on the show. It's more than a trivia show. You may be thinking, hey, Steve, you going to be tossing some trivia at you? Yes. Yes, trivia to the people who are here. They'll be helping us shout out the answers. Um, but also, it's a game show, really. There's some strategy involved. The whole tagline, if you haven't seen the show before, the whole tagline is this. Shout out the answers. Keep your own damn score. All right, I got things to do up here. I'm on a microphone. I'm, I just, I'm, like, there's so many, lots of things here I got to do. I just want you guys to have a unique experience when it comes to trivia. Usually when you go to trivia shows, they say, shut up, be quiet, don't use your phone, whatever. Not here. I don't give a damn. So if you're playing at home, if you're live at home, if you're watching this live at home, surrounded by, like, thousands of your friends, um, that's a big house. But basically what you're doing is you can actually shout out answers. Uh, you can actually occasionally, we'll be picking people to play here as well. You can pick somebody to play uh, if you want. And that person can listen to everybody's shout out answers, but only that one person, damn it. That one person is the only person who can make the answer. That's how the show goes. All right. So that has uh, nine uh, trivia questions. We call them rounds, nine rounds of trivia. One question per, and then we do a rapid-fire round. But that is how the game is played. It's all general knowledge. Um, since we are live, we're going for the live option. We're here at Paradise Studios in beautiful down, downtown scenic Massapequa, ladies and gentlemen. The whole idea really is to kind of get people to come on down here and be a part of this open mic night, okay? Uh, it's really an open stage night. You know, we do a show up front like this trivia. And then we do an open stage night, mostly comedians, but then we have anybody, I mean, musicians, if you have an act, if you juggle, I don't care, go up on stage, you know, and Bobby Lacerra, the owner of the joint, um, also the owner of Strong Island TV, where we're playing, will introduce you up on stage, and you get to work out. Also, besides that, hey, people, you want a crazy night out? This is the place to do it, and it's not too expensive to do it. There's beer. There's beer here. There's food. All sorts of cool stuff. And everything. If you haven't been to this place, I was taking a guy around before. He, he was blown away by the place. We have podcast studios in the back. Um, there's a stage over here um, and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and we live stream, and we make your own podcast show if you want to. So you can come down here and just be in the audience, guys. Uh, so like I said, we do the trivia, open stage, and then we do karaoke at the end of the night. It's a full night of chaos but hey pitter patter let's get at her ladies and gentlemen uh we're gonna go and also if you want to throw some uh, coinage my way uh that might be fun so uh to keep the show going there's my venmo handle right there there's my paypal handle all right take a picture of that i'll wait all right so the money's gonna go to uh keeping the show up and running okay and if you're watching this after the fact and the show is gone maybe it's the year i don't know 20 75. Um, I may still be alive. I could be an Android. Uh, you can just throw some money my way, too. What the heck? You know, because we all want to have some good times. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving on. You guys ready to play? Yeah. My studio audience. Yeah. All right, here we go. Round number one is called Get Scrooged. Get Scrooged. Now, in Scrooged, which parodies a Christmas carol, right? Bill Murray plays Frank Cross, uh, an evil, evil, evil television executive. Uh, that gets the Christmas spirit basically just crammed down his throat. Now, before all that happened, he did try to get a rather unconventional Christmas movie on television. All right, so here's the question. What was the name of the Christmas movie that Frank Cross wanted to air? I'm going to give you the multiple choice, right? And then you're going to have 30 seconds to shout out the answers. I'll say them first, but then... You guys can actually, you'll see them up here on the screen. So, what are they? All right, let me go for it. Is it Santa Ninja? Is it The Night the Reindeer Died? Or is it Violent Night? You got 30 seconds. Shout out your answers, go! We have Violent Night. Violent Night is one. What do you guys think? Santa Ninja, all right. Santa Ninja, okay. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? Uh, this is from... Um, this is from Scrooged. He wanted to get a Christmas movie uh, on the actual screen. He was a Frank Cross played by Bill Murray. Which one do you think he was trying to get up there? Santa Ninja, The Night the Reindeer Died, or Violent Night? You got three seconds to go. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the answer? We're going to find out in just a second. What was the name of the Christmas movie 
that he wanted to air. Here we go. The night the reindeer died. Yeah, the night the reindeer died is the actual name of the thing. Now I'm going to give you guys a fun fact. All right, a fun fact that I call a damn bloody Christmas. Um, the night the reindeer, the reindeer died was an action movie. Okay, this was in the movie Scrooge. There's an actual um, trailer for this. You can actually find it uh, on YouTube. Uh, it was an action movie starring the $6 million man Lee Majors, believe it or not. Now, you see, kids, Lee Majors was <laughs> the $6 million man, okay? Uh, Google it. Trust me. And I, I actually met him. He's a really cool guy. Um, he's a mercenary with a really big machine gun sent to save Santa and deliver a jolly, bloody body count. Uh, Violent Night is an actual film that's out, believe it or not. A uh, film about Santa kicking all sorts of a bad guy ass. So if you want to check that out, go check it out. All right, you're watching Super Mega Trivia Slam. My name is Steve. I am your host for tonight. Uh, we're going to be playing. Hope you're having a good time playing at home. All right, so here we go. We're moving on to round number two. It's called YouTubed. YouTubed, is it? Uh, there must be millions of videos out there, folks. But um, only one. Only one video in the YouTuberverse has the honor of being the video that most everybody out there has transfixed their eyes on. So what is the question, Steve? What is the most watched YouTube video of all time? Is it, I'm going to say it first, then you're going to see it, then you have 30 seconds. Is it Baby Shark Dance? Is it Gangnam Style? Or is it Uptown Funk? 30 seconds. All right, she's shouting out Baby Shark. We have a Baby Shark right there. Okay. Okay. Gangnam Style. We have a Gangnam Style. 23 seconds to go. Okay. Baby Shark Dance, Gangnam Style, or Uptown Funk. What do you think of here? Baby Shark. All right, so we have a couple of Baby Sharks. Gangnam Style and Uptown Funk. 10 seconds to go if you're playing at home. What do you think it is? Shout out the answers. Oh, there, there, people are breaking out into the Baby Shark dance for some reason. One second to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is the most watched YouTube video of all time? Yeah, it's the Baby Shark dance. Yeah, the Baby Shark dance was the most watched video. Is the song in your head now? Do you hear it? Because here's a, a fact. The fact. Do, 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 do. All right, enjoy the earworm, kids. Now. How many views does this bouncy little kid's tune have? Get this. We're looking at over, ready this? 11 billion views. 11 billion views for the baby shark. It's because kids are like playing it constantly, right? It keeps them quiet, you know? Um, no one actually knows who wrote this. Uh, and they will remain safe for now. We will find you. And we, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I have a particular set of skills to do that. Um, there was actually, I believe, once a, a more violent version of this song uh, that ended in all sorts of death and dismemberment, believe it or not. Uh, but that went away. <laughs> However, this song, uh, believe it or not, this song is actually a very big dance hit in Germany. Yeah, so imagine all the Germans doing that dance. You want some Super Mega Trivia Slam? That's me as a bottle cap. Yeah, you can actually buy it over here. If you come in, you'll see me on a bottle cap right there. We're moving on to round number three. Here we go, round number three. That Kevin Smith guy, he really loves to watch films. That Kevin Smith guy, he really loves to watch films. Now, filmmaker and podcaster Kevin Smith um, has been around. He's making movies since the early 1990s, okay? He's known to love all sorts of cinema. Um, as a matter of fact, he loves movies so much, believe it or not, he actually bought his hometown movie theater. He actually owns a multiplex movie theater uh, and runs all sorts of fun films as well as live events. I will actually be um, at Smart Castle Cinemas. We're actually talking about it right now, bringing the show uh, there. But the big question is, what is the name of Kevin Smith's movie theater? What is the name of Kevin Smith's movie theater? Here are your choices, and then you'll see it. Smod Vision Theater. Smod Castle Cinemas or Smod Movie Playhouse. You got 30 seconds, go. What do you think it is? Smod Movie Playhouse. Smod Movie Playhouse. She's like, ah, yeah. Castle Cinemas. Mm. We have a Smod Castle Cinemas. You got 23 seconds to go. What do you think it is? Shout out the answers if you're playing at home. People in here are shouting out answers. 
Smod Vision. We have a Smod Vision. So we have one Smod Castle, Smod Movie Playhouse. All right. Ten seconds to go if you're playing at home. And Kevin, if you're watching, shout out the answer, too. I know. You might like it. All right. Five seconds to go. What do you think it is? Three, two, one. All right. What is the name of Kevin Smith's movie theater? It is Smod Castle Cinemas. Yes, Smod Castle Smith Production Castle Cinemas. All right, here is a uh, Smod Fun Smod fact for you. Now, Smod Castle Cinemas was recently opened up in Highlands, New Jersey. Um, and that's actually the birthplace of Kevin Smith. And yes, he used to actually go there as a kid uh, to watch movies. And he, he's living the dream, man. He actually, his hometown movie theater, he bought his hometown movie theater. So how awesome is that? Uh, currently, he actually just debuted the, uh, the Smod Castle Film Fest because um, he became really popular at the Sundance Film Festival uh, for his first movie, Clerks. Um, he was discovered there. Actually, it's, it's strange. He was actually literally discovered um, at um, the uh, Angelica for the independent feature film market when someone who was a, a scout or someone who knew somebody over at, uh, at Sundance saw his film and then recommended him to Sundance, and he got to go to Sundance. Also, another fun fact, I was actually there. <laughs> I was A film that I was in was right down the hall from Clerks, and I was in the hallway promoting my film, and it's just so strange. I'm now like, I'm actually doing the show there, and I'm actually doing the show here as well. It's just one of those circle of life moments, so there you go. Super Mega Trivia Slam, my name is Steve Stranger. We're right here at Paradise Studios in Massapequa, right by the train station. Okay, uh, you can actually find us here. You know, it's in the CVS uh, shopping center, okay? It's a great place, guys. I want you to come down here and check this place out. If you're a comedian, or if you're a musician, or if you're a performer, even if you're someone who just enjoys, yeah, if you enjoy all sorts of fun stuff and you want to come here and hang out, this is the place to be. So definitely check us out and also watch us right here as well. Um, in just a few moments, I'm going to be uh, asking people to uh, join once again. If you want to throw some money my way, Venmo is at Steve at Steve Strangio. Uh, PayPal is at Steve Strangio. I don't know, throw me a tip, throw me some extra money, see what you got, you know, and we'll keep the show going as well. All right, so in just a few moments, we're going to be picking a player, so I'm looking at you right there. Um, what's going to happen is I'm going to ask the question. Don't answer it right away. Let everybody shout out answers, and then you can answer the question. Sound good? All right, shout out your name. Peter. Peter. All right, Peter. Here we go. Here it is, round number four. How about a serving of tossed salad and scrambled eggs? All right. Frazier. Of course, you know the TV show Frasier. All right. Highly regarded as one of the classic sitcoms out there, with Kelsey Grammer playing the slightly stuffy, but ultimately entertaining uh, psychiatrist slash radio host. The sitcom, believe it or not, is set for a revival. But one of the cast members has publicly stated that he is just not interested in coming back. So here is your question. Which Frasier cast member is not coming back. Is it David Hyde Pierce? Is it Jane Leaves? Or is it Perry Gilpin? All right, 30 seconds, help him out. Shout out answers, what do you think it is? David Hyde Pierce. You already know that, all right, so you're good, that's good. Well, they, they're pretty set in their ways, but they may be wrong, you never know. Shout out your answers if you're playing at home. You got 15 seconds to go, do you want to give it a shot? Have you seen Frasier? Okay, it's good. It's well, you can catch the reboot, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or just watch all the repeats. Five seconds to go. What do you think it is? Fraser cast member is not coming back. He's saying David Hyde Pierce. What is the answer? Yep, it's David Hyde Pierce. Yeah, he played Niles. In case you're wondering. So here is the fun fact. Honestly, Niles. Even though the revival will have a brand new cast, uh, the door is open for any of the cast members to come back. Uh, if they want to. However, David Hyde Pierce, uh, who played Frazier's brother, Niles, stated that he is not interested, and Kelsey Grammer actually confirmed it. Okay, The original idea was to have all of the original cast members um, in the show, but now they're kind of putting, uh, putting Frazier in a brand new environment, so kind of a new fish out of water type of thing. And it's like the third iteration uh, of the character, starting with Cheers, then he got Frazier, and now he has Frazier rebooted so there you go all right so mega trivia slam uh we're moving on we're at round number five all right guys round number five once again i say the question 
You guys can shout out answers. Here we go. Stream a little stream. Stream a little stream. Jenna Ortega recently starred uh, in a Netflix series that takes a classic sitcom character and gives her an uh, and her adventures um, all of her own. Adventures all of her own um, with a new cast, a new location, and a new adventure for each show. So, what I want you to do is name that series. Name that series. Is it Jan Brady, Girl Detective? Is it Wednesday, or is it Velma and the new Scoobies? Go! What do you think it is? We have a Wednesday, a lot of Wednesdays. Definitely Wednesday. Velma and the new Scoobies. Okay, that's a possibility, because Velma is actually making a comeback. All right, what do you think it is? You got 10 seconds to go. What are we thinking in the corner over there? Wednesday? All right, so mostly Wednesday, but you're the lone wolf. Who knows? Maybe you're right. Didn't say Frasier, so that's good. That helps. All right, so there you go. All right, name the new series. What is it? Yeah, it's Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Have you seen The Addams Family? Okay, check it out. So the movie's about it, and there's actually um, uh, a black and white series uh, that you can check out. Okay. Here's an altogether ooky fact. Now, based on the classic Addams Family sitcom and comic strip, believe it or not, they appeared in The New Yorker, um, after being accepted into Nevermore Academy, a, a teenage Wednesday Addams becomes embroiled in a dangerous mystery. Tim Burton was involved with this as well. Uh, using her emerging psychic ability to battle evil. Uh, the show is actually, believe it or not, the show actually toppled Stranger Things as the most streamed show on Netflix. So there you go. All right, you're watching Super Mega Trivia Slam. We're on round number six. We got nine rounds, and then we're going to jump into another one. We're about 17 or so minutes into the show. Here we go with round number six. If you thought Thanos was bad, if you thought Thanos was bad, oh my God, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is gearing up for its next phase, and that means we need another big bad, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to kick some superhero butts all over the damn place. So that leads us to our next question. Who is the next major MCU villain? Here are your choices. Kang, Darkseid, or Mephisto. You got 30 seconds, go. What do you think it is? Go to Kang. Mm -hmm. Kang, is it Wednesday, maybe? No. <laughs> you never know. You got 20 seconds. You watch the MCU? Okay, so what do you think it is? Kang, Darkseid, or Mephisto? Kang or Frazier? Very good. See, I'm, gonna, I'm staying for your stand-up. <laughs> okay, I'm staying for yours, too. I'm staying for everybody's. All right, eight seconds to go, ladies and gentlemen. Who is the next? The next major. There's a whole bunch of them coming up, but who's the next major MCU villain? Kang. Dark side. It's Scooby-Doo. It's Velma. What is the answer? It's Kang. Yeah, Kang, ladies and gentlemen. Kang. Let's find out about Kang. Let's find out about Kang. Now, known as Kang the Conqueror, uh, this alternate universe traveling villain is going to cause some major, major havoc uh, in the MCU. He has a really big backstory uh, in Marvel Comics. So if you uh, just search Kang, if you if you have it online, you know some people actually read comics online. I personally like to hold the comic, but if you read comics online, there's a whole bunch of stories about Kang the Conqueror. Uh, he was first introduced in the cinematic universe in the Loki series on Disney Plus as the leader of the Time Variance Authority. So that was pretty cool. All right, Super Mega Trivia Slam. It's an 80s retro version, if you've known that. Max Headroom? Anybody know who Max Headroom is? Anybody? Anybody? All right, so check it out. Matt Furrer, uh, Max Headroom. is actually what he said on, on, on that show in Max Headroom has actually come to life, believe it or not. So here we go, round number seven. Okay. What, what sort of a four-letter word for a thing that you should not jam in your ear? That's ear talking about. Um, so that would be a Q-tip. I'm just going to give you a heads up on that. Uh, these cotton swabs have been around since 1923, but here is what some people actually need to know. What does the Q and Q-tip stand for? What does the Q... <laughs> it's not that... <laughs> or is it? You're saying Q and I. Uh, quick, quality, or quill? You got 30 seconds. Go. Quality. You have a quality person. Quick. We have a quick guy. Quill. We have a quill. Okay. What are you saying at home, folks? You got 20 seconds to go. There's a Q. There's a Q and Q-tip. 
Damn it, what does that Q stand for? Quick, quality, or quack. You saying, are you saying quack? <laughs> or quill. You got five seconds to go. Let's find out. Three, two, one. All right, we're going to find out right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen. What does the Q in Q-tip stand for? Let's find out. It's quality. Yeah, quality, believe it or not. Quality. Yep, here's a quick tip for you. First invented by Leo Gerstenzang. I guess they couldn't call him Gerstenzang tips. Um, he would notice, get this, he would notice that his wife would stick bits of cotton on toothpicks and then, like, jam them in her ear. So he's like, I, you know, I think we can do better. I think we can do better. Um, when they first came out, like in the early 20s, they were called Baby Gays. Uh, but they dropped that name and then just moved on to Q-Tips. All right, Super Mega Trivia Summary Round. We're getting closer to uh, a rapid-fire round. we got two more questions to go. We're hanging out here at Paradise Studios for Strong Island TV. Seen live. This is happening live right now on, on YouTube, on Facebook, um, on, uh, all, on all sorts of places. It's all over the damn place. Bobby, where else are we? Bobby? Facebook? You, Twitter, Twitch, Twitch Vimeo, Vimeo, Fire TV. We're on, we're on your toaster. <laughs> it's everything. So it's li and Roku. But the live version is on Twitch and Twitter and, and Facebook and YouTube. Okay. All right. So here we go, folks. We're moving on to round number eight. Sci-fi becomes sci-fact. Sci-fi becomes sci-fact. Now, science fiction is usually the precursor to inspire people to actually make the things that they read about in books or actually saw in movies, right? Um, scientists now recently simulated something that is commonly seen in science fiction stories. So this actually happened. We want to find out what did they simulate? Here are your choices and then you'll see them. Did they simulate robot sex? Did they simulate a wormhole? Or did they simulate teleportation? Those are your choices. Go. Robot sex. We have our first robot sex aficionado, ladies and gentlemen. Wormhole. Well, robot sex, I guess, would be a wormhole, wouldn't it? Um, a lot of people on Twitch probably going for the robot sex part. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? What do you think it is? Shout it out. What do you think it is? Wormhole. You have a wormhole. All right. Teleportation. All right. We have a good, what do you think? Teleportation. All right, so we have all different versions of here. You got three seconds to go. What do you think it is? Robot sex, a wormhole, or teleportation? Time is up, ladies and gentlemen. What exactly did they simulate? It was a wormhole, yeah. But I'll count robot sex as the same thing. Whatever <laughs> you go. Uh, let's get wormy, kids. Um, scientists recently created what they call a baby wormhole. Kind of like a baby shark, I'm assuming which basically is a tunnel in space-time. Uh, the wormhole is consistent with Einstein's theory of relativity, but the actual term wormhole was invented by a physicist named John Wheeler in the 1950s. So they actually simulated a wormhole. So that's pretty, that's pretty. They tested it. So basically it all kind of comes, so they can just all watch robots have sex. So it all kind of comes together, ironically. All right, round number nine. We got this last round. Then we're going to go into a rapid-fire round, ladies and gentlemen. 24 minutes into the show. Here we go. Round number nine. Them foreign movie titles is crazy. We have a whole new audience here, which is awesome. But um, if you don't know, I absolutely love this round because it's it just makes me laugh out loud. It's based on this. Um, foreign translations of American movie titles just don't make any damn sense, Okay. There used to be a store in the village. I'd actually buy like foreign movie title, uh, mo movie posters because the titles were insane. So I'm going to give you the American movie title, the American movie title, um, and then three foreign language translations. Not the actual foreign language itself, but the foreign language translations. And you have to guess which is the correct one. All right, you got it. Here we go. In Finland, what is the um, translation of the Shawshank Redemption? in Finland. Once again, I'll say them, and then you'll see it up here, then you got 30 seconds. Here we go. The Finnish, is it Finnish? The fi in Finland, what is the translation of the Shawshank Redemption? Here are your choices. 
Sad man redeems things. Rita Hayworth, key to escape. Or murderer man in tough prison. 30 seconds, go. We have a Rita Hayworth. Murderer man, all right. Tough prison, we have a tough prison. What do you think it is? What is it? Shut it up. Rita Hayworth, we have Rita Hayworth. Okay, you got 16 seconds to go. What are you saying in there? Sad man redeems things. Rita Hayworth, key to escape. Or murderer man in tough prison. Have you seen the movie? It's a pretty awesome film. Lots going on with it. Four seconds. Three, two, one. All right. It's locked in, ladies and gentlemen, in Finland. What is the translation of the Shawshank Redemption? Let's find out. It's Rita Hayworth, key to escape. Yeah, yeah Rita Hayworth, key to escape. Who knew? I knew. I'm going to tell you why. Here is a fun fact shank for you. The movie is based on a novella by Stephen King, and that novella was called Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, believe it or not. Um, for those that didn't actually know who, who Rita Hayworth is, uh, she was one of the most beautiful film stars in the 1940s, just a drop-dead gorgeous woman, uh, and her posters are in the Shawshank Redemption. People are saying, why is me? And obviously, I don't want to spoil it for you, but it plays a role. But the, um, the posters in there represented Andy Dufresne's hope to escape a better life. So that's what they represented, Andy Dufresne. So there you go. All right, folks, we'll be hitting the rapid fire round in just a second. My name is Steve Strangio. Super Mega Trivia Slam. You guys having a good time so far? You shout out. Let me hear it. All right, awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us. Come on down and hang out with us, folks. Uh, if you want to watch the show, be a part of a live show. Um, if you want to donate to the show, let's see if I have that. Uh, this is the rapid fire round. We're going to be hitting the rapid fire round in just a few moments. But um, it's a good time. It's a fun time. It's a loud, raucous time. We actually just filmed uh, three Christmas episodes called the Xmas Bash. Okay, uh, We're going to be airing those on the 19th. We'll be airing those on the 19th of December. Now, if you're watching this after that time, the show is already airing, okay? But if, you, if you're if you watching this now, okay, you can be a, a part of the Christmas Bash. Uh, we'll be airing it on Strong Island TV, uh, both on, on YouTube and also on Roku and all the others, Amazon Fire uh, and the whole deal. Was that? Yeah, it's coming soon. So um, do that, watch the show. It'll be three episodes released simultaneously. So thanks for hanging out with us. All right, folks, rapid fire round is coming up. Now, the way this works is very interesting. Instead of actually giving you guys multiple choice, okay, I'm going to say a statement, okay, and then you have to guess if that statement is true or false. Now, if it's true, you're going to shout out, yay! If it's false, you shout out, nay! All right, that's how that goes. This round is called yay or nay. All right, so you're going to see it up there. You got, it's going to be really quick. You're going to be like maybe like three seconds to answer, so shout it out as soon as you think it is. Yay or nay, here it comes. Uh, the new Indiana Jones movie is called The Dial of Destiny. Go. Yay. We have a yay? Yay. 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 All right, the answer? Yeah, it's yay. Yeah, it's yay. Uh, we're actually going to be seeing a young Indy at the very beginning of the film. So that's pretty damn cool. Moving on to round number two. Here we go. Yay or nay? Swallowed gum stays in your stomach for seven years. Go! Nay. We have a nay. You have a yay. We have a, you got a yay in the back. All right. What is the answer, ladies and gentlemen? Let's find out. Yay or nay? It's nay. Nay. No. It actually passes through your digestive system and you poop it out. Enjoy that popcorn. We, yeah, she's happy about pooping. Hooray! Moving on to round number three. Yay or nay, fire has a shadow. Fire has a shadow. Go. Yay. We have a yay. A lot of yays. A lot of yays going on. What do you think it is? What do you think it is over there? Fire has a shadow. Let's find out. It's nay. No, it's nay. The flame is actually hotter than the surrounding air, so it bends the light. So fire or flame does not have a shadow. Test it and just be safe. All right, moving on to round number four. Yeah, your nay in the movie Pulp Fiction. All the clocks are set to 420. Yeah, your nay, go. We have a yay. We have a yay. What do you think back there? People are talking. We have a yay. All right, let's find out, ladies and gentlemen. Yay or nay? It's nay. No, it's nay. Not all of them. There are a lot of clocks set to the time 420, 
to represent our travelers of the green, but a lot of them were not. So there you go. All right, here comes our final question. Round number five for Super Mega Trivia Slam. Yay or nay? In India, Santa Claus is called Christmas Baba. Go! No. Nay. Nay, we have a no, but we have to say yay or nay. Yay, we have a yay, yay. All right, we're going to find out. This is the final question. The final question. If you got it right, let me hear it. Yay or nay, India Santa Claus is called Christmas Baba. Yay, yay, also called Baba Christmas. Both meaning got one right uh, for Father Christmas. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us once again. If you want to send some money my way, Venmo, at Steve Strangio, PayPal, at Steve Strangio. My name, guess what, is Steve Strangio. Did you guys have a good time tonight? Let me hear it. Woo! All right, even the new people. So thanks for hanging out with us. My name is Steve Strangio. Ladies and gentlemen, see you soon. Good night, everybody.